Hi guys, so welcome to my first video. Alright, so why I opened this channel? Right, the, my plan is to basically upload my training routines every single day. And my goal is to become a GM. You know, right now my feeder rating is like seven, seventeen hundred. So, yeah, basically, not only want to become a GM, you know, I want to become a top player in Malaysia. I'm a Malaysian, right? So, yeah, I, I know a lot of you might thinking, sorry, you never become a GM, bro. All right, I mean, right, you can keep laughing at me, right? But in the end you stop laughing and my chest will silent you so this is day one of my chess training and yesterday I just finished a tournament in Johor it's Kejohanan Chato Orang Muda Johor 2024 yeah so this this video I, I'm gonna analyze the game right I play and maybe day later like day two day three I'll, I'll start training some in games or something positional puzzle something you know okay so yeah yesterday I, I got champion in under 18 category so this is this is what I got right a very nice trophy yeah also a very big trophy all right let's let's get started all right, so I w I'm gonna s start with my game three and game four and game five. Right, I think this three three games basically very instructive. So this is game one. Uh, my opponent is Roger. Right, he's a he's a jo Johor Baru player. Right, and I'm the black pieces. Sorry. So you can see here, I'm the black pieces. Right. <coughs> so start with e4 now <laughs> i play a6 which is a little bit funny <laughs> you know i'm just trying i'm just trying to play something new you know try to play something funny <laughs> so all right opponent play d4 and i decided to transpose to the modern modern defense knight c3 bishop g7 bishop e3 d6 so now basically we're transposed to the modern defense queen d2 i go b5 Opponent is a little bit afraid of d4, he play a3, bishop b7, he play f3, logical, knight d7, castles, knight f6, um, g4, knight b6, h4, h5, g5, knight d7, he play knight h3, I go c5, g takes c5, d takes c5, you go knight f4. So, um, in, this, in this position, actually, well, I can just simply castles. You know, because the queen side is lock, the queen side is lock. Sorry, I mean the king side is lock. So the attack for white is not easy actually. Maybe he has to try something like f5, f4, f5, but it's not that easy. It's not that easy. So this is what it's the best move of the uh, of this position. Um, I decided to play queen c7 to just delay castle and opponent decided to put the knight on d5 maybe you know bishop h3 maybe will be better to you know, put pressure on the d file maybe yeah now i castles maybe on I, I actually i can't play e6 i believe there's some sacrifice there i can still castles no i can't castles because my knight is hanging so bishop h3 is a very nice move to prevent castles he decided to play knight d5 okay i just trade trade i play bishop takes d5 queen takes d5 so um, okay, basically in this position, I have two choice. I can play rook c8 to save my rook or knight d6 to counter the queen and then to save my rook. So I choose to play rook c8. Um, what I calculate with knight d6 is after queen takes c5, queen takes c5, bishop takes c5, and I have this very beautiful tactic bishop takes b2. Now, after king takes, I go knight f4 check and I win back a bishop. And so basically, his pawn structure is a little bit bad. Yeah, but the position is unclear actually. I have the C file. 
and maybe C pawn could be a target. But it's a rapid game. He also, I don't want to like trade queen. Although it's maybe just the best way to play. But I decided to go rook c8. You know to keep as much as much pieces as I can to, you know, to attack him like this. I don't know. He played bishop b bishop h3. I go knight b6. He moves his queen to d3, and I go e6 to block this diagonal. He go king b1. I go knight a4 to attack his pawn. If c3, maybe I have some b4 idea to break through and open up some file. He go bishop, b bishop c1. Alright, now I castle. Alright, he go f4. So basically, it's like a opposite side attack. Um, what well it's attack on the king side, and I'm trying to attack on the king, queen side. Uh, so in this position, there's many moves I c I consider. Um, so I I consider b4. All right, this is the first instinct of this position. My first instinct of this position. But in the game, I decided to play c4. So it's the opposite side attack. So I need some foul. So basically, b4 comes to mind very easily. C4 comes to mind. So I, of course, I can play some move like rook d8. But I, I need some foul. I need some foul. You know, d foul is not what I want. I want some b foul, maybe c foul. In the game, I play c4, which is a move. Um, I think it's not a good move. So b4 is the correct move. The problem is, I'm thinking about queen b3 attacking my knight, and in the game I'm thinking about queen c6, which is a good move, and I'm thinking after takes takes. Um, or actually I missed the c2 pawn fanging. Maybe he can play some rook h2. Maybe he can take on e4, but I just like, I don't see you know like maybe he can just play f5 in this position. I don't see how I attack here actually. So, but actually, after a takes b4, I can just simply play the move rook b8, rook takes b4, and this um, b2 pawn gonna be very, very weak. And the king is just behind b2 pawn, so of course I. Oh, uh, knight c3 is also a very nice threat. So, actually, black is just much better in this position. Um, queen c6 is actually the second best move. I protect the knight and then attack the pawn, but the engine best move. It's very crazy if knight to c3 check. And if it takes, the only move to win is c4. You can't take, you can rook b8. And if you play some queen a2, now I go bishop take c3. So the idea is like, I guess just check. Make the king with rook b8 and then takes. And then the king has no no move. So it's just totally winning for, for black, according to the engine. Um, I didn't see this all thing. You know, I'm not a GM. <laughs> yeah, actually, B4 is just very strong. I don't know why I didn't play it. I, I play C4. Or I play C4. And I just totally miss Queen D6 to trade Queen. So basically, I'm maybe consider. Sorry, I maybe expect he'll play Queen F3. And then my move is gonna be B4 or C3. If B3, Knight A3. Knight b2 and then queen a5, queen takes a3 is the threat. b4 is also a very nice move, followed by takes or c3 even. Yeah, but again, the engine gives a very crazy move, which is bishop takes b2, takes, knight takes, and c3, and then it's just all over actually. So if you go king c1, I, okay, I just queen. I just go queen here, queen here, and checkmate you. You go king here, even b4 wins again. If you go king to b1 in this position, okay, just queen a5, queen takes here, and checkmate. How do you stop the checkmate? Right, even if you go here, I guess I'll just take and then bring the rook to in the game, and then we just black just totally winning according to the engine. Again, um, yeah, so he find the best way just to trade queen. So, why has the bishop pair? So bas basically, if he trade the queen, right, he'll win in the end game. Also, uh, he basically control the d file if I take the queen. So I, I should not trade the queen. Right, so in the game, I play queen a5. 
I'm still trying like trying to play c3, maybe b4. Uh, okay, he played e5, which is a move I don't like. All right, I, I actually k kind of like a bit afraid of f5. You know, he just straight my position. And not only f takes e6, this is a huge threat. F takes b6, bishop takes e6. F6 is also a very huge threat. So he just closes bishop diagonal. I really need this bishop to attack the king here. So maybe I should, I should play something like rook d8 in this position. But it's just totally fine for white, right? He decided to play e5 to close this bishop. But now th that means there's no break, no more breaks, no attack, zero attack for white on the king side. So I can just attack him. So um, this is the best move, and after queen e7, go to f8, and we try b4 and c3, I guess. The idea is to try b4 and c3, but in the game, I play knight c5. I don't know why, probably because I don't like him. I don't like him to play queen b4, and but obviously queen b4, I have queen, queen b6 and a5, and maybe knight e4, I guess, but unfortunately knight c5 is a blunder, because it's not, I mean it's a mistake, uh, it's not terrible blunder, but it's actually a mistake, so he find a right move, which is bishop to d2, Queen a4, basically only move to avoid the queen trade. Queen a4 and bishop e4. Now basically if I... I really want to play knight e4 in this position, but unfortunately you can just move his queen, attack my knight and my rook at the same time. So I'll be down a piece, or down an exchange. So I can play rook f8 here. If he takes, I go bishop f8. But you know what, I decided to like... Because my, in a, it's a rapid game, my opponent is low on time. It's like 40 seconds, 40 seconds on the clock. There's increment, there's 10 second increment, but it's still very hard to sur kind of survive this position for white. So I play knight d3, which is um, surprisingly, it's not that bad according to the engine. So it's just like plus one point. 7 something for white. It's actually not that bad. Actually not that bad. Alright, the best move is bishop takes d6. Alright. Um, sorry, not the best move could be bishop takes e6. Uh, could be takes, I think. Alright, in the game, my opponent just takes. Actually, it's b3, right? I also quite worried about b3, actually, because after I take and then he just takes right but okay I have this very strong move c2 here right so and then queen c2 check and if you take with the rook okay just take the pawn on c2 so my opponent just takes so of course as a human he just takes and now the best move which is a little bit uh, hard to find is c3 so basically you want to open up the king side position. So if you take with the bishop, right? We can just sack our rook, take queen b3, and just go for a draw. There's nothing better than draw. I'm down a full rook. Yeah, so we just do draw. So if you take with the pawn, okay, I have a5. And then bishop c5, okay, queen c3 check. Right, again, I still have some play here. You know, at least a draw, right? At least a draw. But I can fight with b4 or something, I don't know. Oh, maybe I win back a bishop, right? Yeah. Uh, let's say after c3, rook c1. Okay, just c takes b2. And attacking the rook and queen b3. So she, of course, the rook is hanging. If the rook moves somewhere, queen c2 is a huge threat. If you take... Well... There's a5. There's a5, and you move your bishop, I guess. Just rook d8 and just take something. Screw rook take here. Rook cd8. Yeah, the, the queen 
have to move somewhere, but the queen can't defend this pawn. They would just take, and it's yeah, just all over. Black is just totally winning. Um, unfortunately, I didn't find c3. It's a hard move, you know. I play rook d8. Um, okay, so in time trouble, my opponent just takes. So, queen b6 is the right move to stop a5, which I miss. I'm thinking about queen e7 actually. And again, c3 is the correct move. But um, in the game, I actually want to play this move. Alright, the engine says the only way to save the game is to just go for the reputation with bishop g7, bishop f8. Right, I also see this. Um, I think I'll go for a draw in this position because I see that after bishop takes b4, he has bishop takes b6. And now I'm just losing. So, again, according to the best moves, c3 is the right move. After rook c1, bishop f8, queen f2, c6, c2, king takes b2, bishop takes b4. So now this doesn't work because we can, we can take on a3. And then basically it's just checkmate, I guess. Uh, okay, so right, but queen b6 just stop a5 and black's just totally losing. Right, very lucky. Right, luckily my opponent just take on c4. Okay, I take, take. I decided to play queen b3. He played rook b2. Uh, to, to right, so it's a checkmate. Go rook b2, and actually my opponent's so low on time. So I try to flag him actually with queen takes c4, which is a blunder. Right, the right move is actually b takes c4, I guess followed by c3. The idea is, why it's a blunder? Because the opponent can simply play d7. And then instead of bishop e7 and bishop a5, which looks very natural. So okay, my op my I, the idea of the queen sacrifice is to try to push the passer and play bishop e7 or bishop a5, trying to push the pawn, to promote the pawn. Uh, actually, it could be work. It could be work. So, right. So it's actually a blunder. Why? Because of rook c1 and then just rook c8. Right. But very luckily, my opponent played bishop e7 and totally missed this check. So I just takes and then checks. So it's actually a very bad game. My opponent. I don't know why he take on here. Takes. He's trying to play f7, f8. Unfortunately, this queen takes a shift h4 and then. It's a pin. You can't move. You can't take. You can't move the pawn, and the pawn can't be promoted. Yeah, but so basically, this is a very bad game. I find a wrong, wrong way to attack. Actually, b4 is just very, it's just a very simple move. I don't know how I missed this. Instead, I play c4, which is a mistake because the problem is I can't break, and he closed my bishop, and I make a mistake. Right. Oh, I, I, well, I, I guess the idea is to, to go b4, I guess. Yeah, to block the queen and then uh, play b4. Well, maybe it's also decent, but there's b2. Right. So, actually, yeah, just b4 here is very good. So, this is game one. Alright. So, game two, my opponent is Tamil. Alright, his full, his full name is Tamil Salvin. Uh, now in the white pieces, right? <laughs> I play a3. <laughs> um, why? Like I say, just trying to play chess for fun. You go out of six. I go out of three. D5. I decided to play the Benoni, the reverse Benoni. You know, you go d4, e3. Obviously, c5 is the the main move here. But now with a3 pawn, maybe I can just take six and play d4. I guess. Yeah. Or d3, g3, and followed by d3, g3, bishop, g2. And this is a better version of Benoni because I have b4 pawn push. So usually in the Benoni red, um, after a3 or after a6, white should play a4 to stop b5. So in this case, a3. He has to play a5 to stop b4. Because what we have is queen side pawn majority. So before a5, we can just play go, go with b4. So it's kind of like a better version. My opponent played knight c6. I decided to take six. Knight takes b4, queen takes b4, d3, c6. Well, c6 is a very weird move, in my opinion. 
I'm actually thinking about c5 or e5. Just trying to take the d4 square. But he plays c6. Um, so be before I go bishop e3, uh, he's going to take on b2. So I go knight c3. So I just to go bishop e3. Um, he played a good move, knight g4, which I didn't expect. I'm expecting e5, bishop e3. You know, maybe queen d2 in castles. Play knight g4. Queen f3. And okay, my opponent go queen f6. So, there's a very nice tactic here. Queen e3 is the right move to prevent any check. Why? Because after queen f3, he has this very nice tactic, knight takes h2, which I missed. Rook takes, queen e5 check. And, yeah, black's just better. Instead, he go for queen f6. So, if your opponent plays such move, right, basically you know that they're afraid, right? Why? They're just trying to trade queen. Right, they're just trying to trade queen and go for, trying to play for a draw. Right, so basically, I know that. My queen, my queen basically have no, mu not much square to go. If I go e4, maybe you go queen e5. If I go queen e2, you also go queen e5. If I go anyway, like queen g3, queen e5, check. And just force a queen trade. So basically what I'm thinking right now is how do I, how I get most advantage right after you trade the queen. So of course trade is not good because well I guess you just stick with the e pawn and activate the bishop. So in the game I play queen g3. Queen g3 is actually not a very good move because of the h5. I saw this move. Um, yeah, but like I say, I know that my opponent wanted to, wanted to trade queen. So in the game he did play queen e5. So if h5, right, right, maybe I can play knight e4 or something. The My position is actually not that bad, you know. It's actually not that bad. I can play bishop e2, knight smooth. <coughs> um, right, you play queen e5. Now, okay, I'm thinking of bishop e2. Why not just activate bishop after you trade pawn takes? No, I got an open file. But I see this move, e5, stopping... I play stopping me to play d4 and it's a backward pawn. He can go bishop f5 castles. And so I play queen takes d5. And another reason is I want to get tempo. So d4 comes. Right, so takes takes d4, he go knight g6. And now I play a very strong move, h4. Alright, h4 is a very strong move. The idea is to trap his knight. So as a human being, when you see h4, h4, Right, people just go h5. Right, uh, like I mean, a normal player, a decent player, will just go h5. Of course, the grandmaster will not play such move. Right, e5 is the best move, but I guess after h5. Actually, I don't know what is why e5 is the best move. I guess e6 will be better, and after h5, go knight e7. But of course, black white is just, you know, black pieces is just stuck. He he wastes some, he wastes many many moves. Wait, is this nice? Go here, 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 and go back. This is very bad actually. And he blocked his bishop. He blocked his another bishop. If you go knight e seven, so h four is actually a very strong move. The idea is h five actually trap his knight. So we go h five. So the idea is we provoke h five, and now we go bishop e three. Now the knight is trapped again. Right. So in the game you play bishop b7, and I can just takes takes. You know, it's a, look at this. It's a very bad pawn structure. There's an isolated pawn here. I can just go bishop f4 to prevent e5, force e6, to let him bishop bat. If you want to activate this bishop, he can't activate this way. You have to play e6. Right, I got a very comfortable position. Very comfortable. Right, very comfortable position. Well, so maybe he can play f5 here but okay i just go bishop e5 i guess so in the game after you go bishop d7 i thought that his knight is just trapped so i said okay i just go bishop e3 first after you go e6 trying to go back okay now I'm, i take but he played f5 actually i missed f5 to be honest but 
it's actually fine, still fine, but maybe it takes, maybe it's better. Practically, it's just better because of this pawn structure. So we play f f5. So I think okay, maybe black is okay here. Okay, so I copy. And in this position, well, e5 is the move that I afraid. Um, I guess I'll take takes. And maybe go rook e1. This bishop is actually very bad. Maybe I guess I'm fine. But at least I think black is doing well. Well, you know, he can take and castles. But in the game, after I castle, he play e6. So after I see this move, I was like, why? Why don't you break? And then you make his bishop worse. So I want to go rook e1. But my h1 is hanging. So before I do that, I go c3, simple move, bishop e6, rook e1. Aiming is king. Actually, I'm expecting castles. Right, castle queen side or king side, he plays king f7. Which is good, because in the end game, the king need to be active. So why not king f7? Now you want to play f4. Maybe not now, but there is some idea like f4 to weaken my pawn structure. To broke my pawn structure and the h4 h4 pawn is hanging. Maybe I can give up my bishop pair and, and get the free pawn. I don't know. So I play bishop g5 uh, to prevent f4 with tempo. And f4, I mean, there's no threat, I guess. No, f4, I think I can just, can just take and take. An idea, another idea is I simply want to open up my rook. Um, he play rookie eight. He want to go e5. I go f4. Now, when I play f4, right, it's kind of like I block my own bishop. So it looks like this bishop is doing nothing here, but actually this bishop is very useful, in my opinion, because it blocks the, sorry, it controls the only f only open file, or only semi-open file for black, which is the d file. Right, so the bishop is very useful here. In the game, he played bishop e7, which is a move I don't like. Bishop e7 is a very bad move, in my opinion, because... This bishop is extremely bad. All your pawn is on the light square. So you need that dot square bishop. But he, after you go here, I just trade it. Knight takes, and now this bishop becomes very bad. Now, there's some idea like knight b1, knight d2, knight f3, knight e5, or knight g5. Right, the e6 is a weakness, so I go knight g5. e5 is a weak square, I can also go that. But before that, I decided, okay, my bishop is not good here. So if I want to win this game, right, there's two ways. One is I use my pieces to win some pawns. Second, I need pawn break. So basically on the king side, right, there's no pawn break, zero pawn break. Um, yeah. So the only pawn break is d5, I guess. So I decided to go bishop e2. And then go bishop f3. Just transpose to the this diagonal and then maybe supporting d5. Bishop f1 is also fine. But I guess bishop e2 at least. Right, try try and do something here. And then my opponent play g6 to defend his h pawn. Okay, now I go bishop f3. Knight c8, trying to play knight d6. So to attack my c pawn. Okay, I go b3. So basically in this position, right, I have I'm thinking, okay, wh which is the weak square? Well, actually, bishop f1 might be better because the f3 square maybe the knight can use the f3, f3 square. But okay, so how do I get the knight to e5? Basically, in the game, right, I'm thinking to bring my knight to e5. So there's many ways. So if the knight wants to go e5, he has to go d3. So there's many ways. There's knight d1, knight here, knight here. There's knight a4, knight here, knight here, or knight here, knight here, or uh, knight a2, knight c1, knight d3. Alright, so I can't go knight d1 because there's a rook there. I can't, oh maybe knight a4 is good here, but then knight, knight d6. Uh, I first go b, b3, I first go b3 because just prophylaxis, he go knight b6. So. If he didn't go knight b6, I'll just go knight a4. And then knight c5, provoke b6, and now I go knight b3. 
weaken this d6 pawn, and now this right, this is very strong. Um, so you go knight b6, stopping knight a4 idea. So my rook is doing well here. I don't want to just move my rook and play knight d1. So I decided to, you know, king need to be active. So first, I play king c2. No knight a2 first. Why? Because I don't want to show my cards so fast. So king c2. Maybe opponent would think that okay, it's just he's just trying to activate his king. When a2 is just too obvious, this is too obvious. So first I play king a2, he go rook e7, and I go knight a2 now. Right, so I want to go here. He go a5, so if I go knight c1, he he go a4 to, you know, it's a bit annoying. Instead of a4, which give him some chance to play b5 something. Um, I decided to play King C3. You know to to keep. I don't want to like lock the position so fast. I want to keep keep something here. So if I go A4 here, maybe here's some B5 idea which I don't like. So okay, I just go King C3. The idea is after A4, I want to go B4. All right, he go Rook D8. Okay, I go Knight C1, Knight A8. Maybe he's trying to defend his e pawn. I go knight c3, knight c7. All right, here's the point. So most of the people will just go knight e5. This looks very, very, uh, very good, right? But I'm thinking after knight e5, maybe king f6 or king g7. What should I do? So here's a weakness. So in endgame, right? One weakness. One weakness is not enough to win, right? Because opponent just defended, like what he do, right? So he just defended. So there's a weak, there's a principle called principle of two weakness. So when there's a weakness on the king side, you create another one on the queen side. So basically, you can see in this position, this position is aiming at this two pawn. If you move any pawn, this will be. Um, that the pawn will be weak. Move C pawn, B pawn will be weak. Move D pawn, this will be weak. So A pawn currently is hanging. There's no defender. That's why I go rook C5 in this position. My opponent play B5 in time trouble. If B6 is just totally same thing. So the idea is I provoke B5 and I just go back. And now he can't stop knight E5. And I attack this pawn. I just win a pawn. So rook a just much better, and I have to find another plan. So in this position, the best move is not rook e5. It's actually rook e5 is, is very good though. But the best move is to go knight c5. The idea is after bishop c8, then we go rook b1. The idea is to go b4 again, like I say, attack the weakness. Right. So we open up the b file and attack the b7 pawn. But okay, I go rook e5. If you go rook a8 here, I have to find this plan, which I don't. Rook b1, b4, knight c5. All right, so yeah, so okay, my opponent just go b5. I go rook e1, b6 is the same thing. So all right, and knight takes c6 was actually the best move after six six. I played the wrong move. <laughs> I played just take c6, which is a blunder. Which is a blunder. Why? My opponent did find the right move. Right, I'm expecting take six, and then the rook move because I'm attacking rook, and then I just take on a5. I'm up two pawns. My opponent just takes and then blunder a full bishop, and yeah, and I win soon. After some move, then my opponent just resign. So why this is a blunder? Because there's a very nice defense. Take six instead of moving the rook. Knight d5 check. Now is that he's t he is a discover check. He want to take my knight. I have to take his knight. After take, I can't save this knight. Right, the difference is after knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight d5, I can simply take with the bishop. Alright, and play c5 something, I guess. So, uh, after bishop takes, he can actually take, take, and knight c5 takes 6. After he went back to this knight, guess what? It's just a draw. Right, this is all pawn, all the pawn is locked. There's no way to win. I didn't even win any material, so it's just.
Right, unfortunately my opponent didn't see it and I win the game. Pretty easy. So I really like this game because like I just kind of like playing very good with rookie five, provoke b5. You know, I'm kind of proud of myself, you know. Because I know it's the this is a bad bishop, so I'm patient, I'm patient, and then basically I just improve all my pieces. Bishop, go to the bad diagonal, knight, go to the bad square, and then provoke some weakness. Okay, just win the game like this. Okay, the last game I want to show is again Danish. Alright, my opponent, my, I'm black pieces, my opponent played d4, I go down f6, so no nonsense anymore. I decided to go with Benoni, which I played against Tamil the last game. Right, reverse Benoni. So uh, he got d5, I got e6. He decided to play take 6, b5, take 6. Now I have 3, knight c6, e3, bishop e7, bishop b5, castles, castles, bishop b4. I think in this position, a6 is better. The reason is in this kind of this type of position, right, this is called hanging pawn. If you don't have the b pawn, right? That pawn is called hang hanging pawn, right? So hanging pawn is very weak. So c5 is not hanging pawn because I have c6, but d5 is hanging pawn. It's a very weak pawn. He can just go queen b3 and rook d1. So a6, if you take, I take with the pawn. I defend my defend my pawn. Okay, I'm good. Um, I go bishop g4. The idea is, I I know this is the weakness. I try to make his queen harder to move away because I can just take and I can do something here on the king side you know queen e8 queen g6 I guess queen b7 queen g3 also very nice the king is a little bit weak if you allow the double pawn here and also my rook is here he played h3 uh, okay I go b6 h5 again I'm still putting um there's still tension there he goes g4 which is a good move I miss I'm thinking of the g4, I can just take on g4, but what I miss is after my knight takes, he can take on d5. The d5 pawn is undefended. So I calculate two lines here, which is takes and queen d5. They both doesn't work. So I decided to play bishop f7. So what I calculate is the simplest way is actually just take. And after takes, he go knight takes. Let's say I take his knight here. And he can take my bishop, but first remove the defender, defender of the this bishop. So just take six, knight takes c seven, king f eight, h g four, bishop g four, knight takes c six. He's up a full piece, but the engine has uh, engine has <laughs> go deep into this position. They say this bishop is so bad, it's can't that he can't develop that easy. This, so that means this rook also. So before this bishop get active, we go for checkmate. Rook e8, rook e6, rook g6. Bishop d2, let's say, rook e6. Let's say he moves this knight, bishop h3. And it's actually made. So let's say rook d1, check. And then it's just checkmate. Right, so um, you have to give up the knight, I guess. No, maybe you have to play king g2 or something. It's hard for, for black. Okay, bishop d2 is actually fine. After rook e6, you should play d3. If I take on c6, and you go king g2, the only move to win. Sorry, the only move to save. Yeah, after rook g6, and go rook h1, and then you start running. Okay. Um, yeah. Right, this is the first thing. Of course, I didn't... I, I see until this position. I calculate under this position. Knight takes c6. I calculate under this. Of course, I didn't see this idea. I'm not a GM again. I can't see it. I can't calculate that. I can't calculate many moves ahead. So, alright, another line is takes, takes. This line, I think I have some chance. Because now bishop takes f3, takes, takes. I'm down a full piece, but I calculate. I I thought this position is could be could be good because 
if he moves something, I go rook e8 and then I extract. But I see that I saw that there's e4. e4. Now the threat is knight takes e6. He want to go. He want to run away. If I take, okay, rook e1. If I don't take, he play knight f5. The knight is not trapped. So I calculate this position from I from here. I calculate this, 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 and I see e4. So it doesn't work, unfortunately. I have to move my that mean I have to move my bishop. So his idea is g5. I mean single d5. So I have to play bishop f7. Add more defender to this pawn. He go knight g5. Go a6. He go bishop d3, which is a move I don't like. He should move his bishop somewhere and keep pressure in this pawn. Maybe bishop here and bishop here. He decided to go here. I go queen d6. Knight takes f7. Rook takes f7. F4. Rook d8. So in this position, right? Um, it's a bit scary. It's a bit scary, but he's haven't he haven't developed his his pieces yet. He haven't developed all his pieces yet. That mean it just looks scary, but in the game, I actually think that it is overextended. Um, why? Like I say, he haven't activated all his pieces yet. So basically. What he has is bishop pair, right? I don't have bishop pair. So that means white have long term advantage, right? If you have long term advantage, bishop pair, long term advantage means, right, like endgame is good for you. So I don't have bishop pair, so endgame is just worse for me basically. So I have short term advantage. What is the short term advantage? Better development. So why, why I call this short term advantage? Because after you play this, 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 activate all his pieces, I no more have this advantage. I don't have this advantage anymore because he also have the development. So I have to use this development before he de develop all his pieces. So this is called short term advantage. So when you have short term advantage, you want to play fast. Of course, you can't play slow. Opponent, If you play slow, opponent just improve all his pieces and his opponent is fine. Opponent has long term advantage. He's fine. He's fine. He's just fine. So I have to play fast. What is play fast? Make threat. Play aggressive. So the move come to my mind here is c4 and d4. And d4, I'm thinking take 6, knight e4. He trade more pieces. And I should... Uh, I do have a pass through here, but... I didn't see like a way to... Like... I didn't see how I'm better. I didn't see. I just don't see how I'm better in this position. C4 makes more sense to me. The idea is after bishop b1. The problem is after bishop b1. I, I again I didn't see anything here. His threat to play g5 and then take on d4, d5. So before that I go rook d, rook d8. To just defend, defend my, defend my d, d5 pawn. Um, the engine say there's <laughs> a very brilliant move here, which is g5. You can't take because of queen g3 check. So this is actually overextended. Let's say queen f3, okay, we take. If you take, okay, d4. Again, play fast. Let's say you take here. Um, take on f4 is just fine. Again, you take. I can push d4, you take with the rook. Okay, just rook e8. You have a weakness on e3. You still can't activate a bishop that easy. Can't activate a knight that easy. Bishop d6, calm. I can just... I have short term advantage. I, I still have short term advantage, so I, I still can attack him. With bishop d6, maybe bishop c5. You know, but there, there's a better move here instead of trade queen, which is knight e5. The threat is knight takes g4 and then attack the queen, discover the queen. Let's say queen here. Okay, I go knight e4, attack the queen. He has to take, check here, here, and then this is how I win with my short term advantage. So immediately, black is just better. Queen d1 check followed by rook f8. Black is just better. I mean. Um, if white plays some careless move, I can just checkmate him. You know, he can't activate his bishop and rook because it's pinned, so I basically can activate this all of my pieces easily to attack his king, so black's just better, better here. Of course, I didn't see g5. Again, I'm not a grandmaster. Alright, that's why I'm still training here. <laughs> so I play rook d8. He go knight e2. So basically, his idea is very obvious. He's trying to defend the square. He want to go f4, f5. 
So again, I have to play fast. So my idea is to play, I still want to play c4 here, even b5 here. Alright. So, but okay, after c4, I'm thinking, okay, just go back. So I, I actually want to prepare c4. So I play knight d7. The idea is, now, let's say after f5, I want to close c4. If you go bishop d2, knight b4 with tempo. So let's, I'm expecting bishop e1, knight, knight c5 is what I like here, but bishop d5 is even stronger to p maybe prevent knight f4, and the idea is just go knight c5 and double the rook, black is just better here. Right, so, okay, obviously, I have to play fast, right, but you have to understand which side you're playing on, so I'm more based on the center and the queen side, so basically this side, like, this side is what I'm playing for, right, from e4 to b4, it's, it's not, it's center and queen side, it's between center and the queen side, I don't know, I don't know how to call this, but maybe it's center and the queen side, right, uh, yeah, this is my idea, right, give some idea like knight f4, knight e6, so, okay, c4, b5, okay, I'm good, um, let's say you play g5 instead, again, I go the same thing, just literally same thing, right, I have some idea like knight b4 and knight d3, which is good, I think, yeah, and then I just play fast here, I guess, he go knight g3, so now I want to go c4, but I'm I saw knight f5 is a little bit uh, annoying. I want to keep my bishop on keep my bishop on e7 because not only I have plan like knight c5, I have some even have some plan like queen c7, bishop c5. But now I can just take it. So first I play g6. So my opponent play a blunder here, which is f5. I don't know why he do that. He just completely miss queen takes d3, and I win the game easily like this, and then checkmate. But, okay, uh, which is quite, I feel bad to win this way because I actually want to play a very nice game, you know, to prove that when opponent attack you, you, you prove that the, the attack is not work, and you prove that, he's, that he haven't activated all his pieces, so this is not aggressive, this is just overextended, and I have developed all my pieces, so I can basically attack you first. So, let's say king g2, bishop h4 is the move I consider, but okay, first c4, why not, to get the tempo, and now bishop h4 is what I, is a decent move, I try to prevent f5, prevent every counterplay, and and then followed by knight c5 or something, but knight c5 is just enough, you know, it's just good enough. So let's say you play queen f3 to defend the knight, oh, now I even have knight, now I even have knight e5, so... C4 is a move, is a good move here, but I have some knight e5 here with pin. If you take, um, well, I can take, takes, and takes, and then bishop takes d6, and I'm just better here. So, yeah. Yeah, so, that's all for my game analysis so before the my before the end before i end this video i want to show one more one more um thing all right this is the position so it's a it's not my game it's the master game so white pieces is vishnu parsana and black pieces is guket and i think uh, is it it is after this game vishnu prasana become guket's coach Right, so it's the same thing. Gukesh, with the black pieces, have long term advantage. Bishop pair and a pass through. So Vishnu, Vishnu Prasanna understand this position. Right, so instead of just castle, he know that he need to play fast, make threat. So c5. Right, it's very similar like the c4 move. Here. Right, it's very similar, and then I get the c5. Right, it's very similar. It's just, it's just totally same thing here, and the knight gets a c4. And bishop e6, 
3, castle, b4, a, a4 could be played here, but um, in the game, he played rook ad1, which is a little bit weird, because you have more pieces on the queen side, and you want to play on the queen side, you want to expand on the queen side. So this move is actually not the best move. The best move is rook, a, rook fd1, and just keep expanding. a4, a5, something like that. But Vishnu, Prasanna win the game also. All right, still win the game with rook d1. All right, it's just fine. So like I say, um, like I say, you you are playing on, I'm playing on this side. So, so I'm playing on this side. Queen side. Right. Basically this side lah. Right. So. Um, rook a d1 was not the correct move because you're playing on this side, queen side. So rook f d1 is the better move, and then a4 just keep expanding there. Before opponent attack attack you, you know. You. Like I said, you have short term advantage. You have better, better, ex better development. Okay, you. Just don't play slow, play fast and make threat, play aggressive here. Alright, um, yeah. Actually, I've seen this game before, so... I... When I play this game, right, I'm just, just trying to, to play like this game. And that's why I play knight d7 in this position instead of c4. i really trying to imitate this game, what, what happened in this game. And unfortunately, it didn't happen because... My opponent blunder the knight. Alright, so that's all for today, for day one. So, yeah. Well, it's 15 minutes here, quite long. So, right. Bye.